Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Synology's Cloud Station server. So today I'm going to show you guys how to create a Dropbox-like private cloud using Synology's Cloud Station server. This app allows you to create a two-way sync of files between your computer and your NAS, very similar to that of Dropbox. However, the files are stored on your local network, not out in the cloud. To get started, simply check your main menu by clicking on the main menu icon to see if CloudStation server was installed during the initial setup. If it's not listed here, just simply go to the package center to get it installed. Click on backup and then look for CloudStation server and then come down and click the install button. Now mine says open because it's already installed. If yours isn't installed, it'll say install. Once the installation is complete, we're ready to get started configuring CloudStation server and CloudStation drive. If your installation of CloudStation server was successful, it should appear in the main menu. Let's launch CloudStation server now to get started. Okay, so you can see that it's installed, it's enabled, it tells you that the system is healthy, and you have options here. And what we need to do to do the sync between the computer and the NAS, we need to download and install CloudStation Drive on the computer. So let's click on Download Now. And you can see here it says Download CloudStation Drive for Mac. If you're using a Windows computer, it'll say Download CloudStation Drive for Windows. So let's go ahead and click on Download CloudStation Drive. So now that the installer has been downloaded, let's launch it and continue with the installation process. So I'm in my Downloads folder, and this location may vary on your computer. Here's the Synology CloudStation installer. Let's launch it. And it says click to double-click to install. Let's do that and go through the process. Here's your typical Macintosh installer. Continue. Agree. Install. Okay, now that the installation was completed, it's time to configure. Get out of here. Let's get out of here. So now that CloudStation Drive is installed on the computer, we're ready to begin mapping folders between the NAS and the computer. That being said, let's jump back into the NAS interface and make sure the folders we want to map to the computer are enabled in CloudStation Server. So to do that, let's click on Settings. You see the list of file folders that are available for mapping. They need to be enabled. So for the purpose of this video demonstration, I'm going to map an image folder that's sitting on my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the photo folder here. So we'll map the photo folder on the NAS to the free images folder on the desktop. So let me select photo and say enable. And now we're presented with the versioning dialog box. And basically it's asking how many versions you want to um, save of the file. So I'm going to just go with the 32 default. Down where it says rotation policy, this is basically the same concept as a time machine backup. When the space gets filled up, it will uh, delete the earliest version. So for example, when version number 33 is ready to be written to the NAS, it will remove version number one to make room for version number 33. With IntelliVersioning though, the NAS uses an, an algorithm to try to determine the most important versions to keep and it will delete the less important versions to make room for the newest version. But I'm just going to leave it set on the defaults here and say OK. And then we just get a little bit of a warning. It says before performing tasks, please make sure the user account used for syncing has the appropriate permissions. So you need to make sure your permissions for your, uh, your shared folders are set pr uh, properly before going ahead and configuring CloudStation Server. So for now, I'm just going to say OK. And you can see here now that the Photo Shares folder is enabled um, and we're ready to go. So let's get back out of here 
and go back into Cloud Station Drive now and begin the mapping process. So we're going to click on Start Now. And here you have to enter either the domain, which is the IP address of your NAS, or the Quick Connect ID that you install, that you set up during the installation process. So what's the difference? If you put in your internal IP address, um, the NAS will only be available to you on your local network. If you use your Quick Connect ID, then you'll be able to uh, sync files to your NAS even when you're away from your home network and you're out on the remote internet. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use the IP address of NAS. And you don't have to put in the colon 5000 on this screen. Put my username in and my password and say next. Do you wish to switch to Quick Connect? Even when on the go, your data will be protected as long as you're online. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to say not now. And then you get the SSL certificate warning, and that's because it's a self-signed certificate, so you can go ahead and say proceed anyway. Okay, now it's showing you, here's your NAS, and here's your computer. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the little edit pencil. And you can see here now, here's the photo folder that we enabled in the previous step. So I'm going to select the photo folder on the NAS and say OK. And then I'm going to come down to my computer and I'm going to say edit. And I want to sync this with this folder here, the free images folder. So I'm just going to scroll down. I'm going to expand my desktop. And here's the free images folder. Now, before I say OK, I want to do a one-to-one -one sync, a one-to-one -one mapping. So I'm going to uncheck Create an Empty Cloud Station folder. What this does is it would create, let me just move this out of the way for a second. It would create inside this free images folder another folder called Cloud Station. And anything that you would want synced would have to be dropped into that Cloud Station subfolder. So I don't want that. I just want a one to one so that everything that sits inside the free images folder gets synced to that photos folder out on the NAS. So I'm going to make sure that that's unchecked and I'm going to say OK. Once you have your folders mapped, just simply say done. Also, guys, if you click on the advanced tab, you can go into here and you can um, uncheck things that you don't want to be synced. But for now, I'm just going to leave this as is and say done. And you can see up here it says Cloud Station Drive is running. Congratulations. Start using Cloud Station Drive now. You can find the shortcut to your sync folder on your desktop. And you see the notification here. The NAS is telling us that it updated eight files. So let's say OK. I don't know if you notice, but now the free images folder, uh, the icon changed, and you can see the little cloud sync emblem on the folder itself. Let's go into the actual Synology interface and let's look at the file station. And let's click on the photo folder. And here you can see all the images. Let me just see if I can do this. OK, so there you go in a list. There are the images from the folder on the desktop synced to the folder on the file station. So that's it, guys. It's pretty simple. You can do this with multiple folders. So if you on the Mac, if you want to sync your desktop to a desktop folder and your documents to a documents folder and then your media folders to each of the individual media folders on your uh, Macintosh home folder, you can do that. Just remember that in order, let's get out of the file station, in order to sync and map the folders, you have to ha enable them. So the first step would be to go to your control panel and create the shared folders. 
And then once the shared folders are created in the control panel, they will appear here in the Cloud Station server settings. And then once they appear here, you have to enable them. So that's about it, guys. It's pretty simple. It's a couple of steps, but it's pretty straightforward. If you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Please like, please share. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.